If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question before moving on. Now, we know that for both cylinders A and B, that the stress is proportional to the strain. Let's take a look at the equation that summarizes that idea. Now, the strain on the cylinder A could be represented by the ratio of the change in length to the original length of the cylinder, and then the stress would be the force exerted on the surface of the cylinder divided by the cross-sectional area of the cylinder. And then E sub A is the Young's modulus constant. And of course, we could write the same relationship for cylinder B. Now, the question notes that the cylinders had identical lengths before the brick was placed on them, and it also notes that the brick is currently resting horizontally on the cylinders. So what that all means is that the original length L was equal for both the cylinder A and cylinder B. And the change in length will also be the same for the two cylinders since, again, the brick is resting horizontally. So we can actually set this quantity equal to its corresponding quantity for cylinder B. We're going to try to solve this equation for the ratio of FA to FB. So first thing we could do is multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over FB. And then we can multiply both sides of the equation by this term here so it cancels on the left and shows up in the numerator on the right. For the area of cylinder A we were told that that area is equal to twice the area of cylinder B so we can make a substitution there. And then the Young's modulus of cylinder A was equal to twice the Young's modulus of cylinder B. And of course, then we can eliminate the terms A, B, as well as E, B, since they both appear in the numerator and denominator. We could therefore see that the ratio of force A to force B ends up equaling 4. So in other words, the force exerted on the top of cylinder A is equal to 4 times the force exerted on the top of cylinder B. Now, if we go back to the picture, which I admit is a little bit blurry, I apologize for that, we can see that there are several forces acting on the brick. There is the force of gravity acting straight down at the center of mass that we could label W. We have the surface of cylinder A pushing up on the brick, so we can label that F sub A. And then cylinder B is also pushing up on the brick, and we'll label that F sub B. Because the brick is in equilibrium, we know that the sum of these forces is equal to zero. Or, in other words, we could set the two upward forces equal to the single downward force. Now, if we actually go back and look at the question for part A and B, it's asking what fraction of the brick's mass is supported by cylinder A. In essence, what that question is asking is the ratio of FA to W. That's really what we need to solve for. And so we can do that if we make a little bit of a substitution. We recall from this equation that FA was related to FB in the following manner. Now we can quite easily find that ratio if we combine this equation with the one that we had found earlier. We know that if we multiply both sides of this by FB, that FA is equal to 4 times FB, as noted earlier. We could actually divide this equation by 4, and we would see that the force on B is 1 fourth of the force on A. So we're going to make a substitution. We're going to replace FB with FA over 4. We'll combine like terms. We'll multiply both sides then by 4 fifths, and then finally divide both sides by W to get the ratio that we seek. We can then see that the fraction of the brick's mass that's supported by cylinder A is equal to 4 fifths, or if we prefer in decimal form, 0 0.80. So that would be the correct answer to part A. Now, it's probably obvious at this point, then, that if the fraction of the brick's mass supported by cylinder A is 0 0.8, then the fraction of the brick's mass supported by cylinder B would necessarily have to be 0 0.2. Of course, we could solve for that by referring back to these two equations. FA is 4 times FB, so we could substitute here. We'll combine the like terms. Multiply both sides by 1 fifth, and then finally divide both sides by W. And indeed, that ratio turns out to be 1 fifth or 0 0.20, so that would be the correct answer to part B. For part C, to solve for the ratio, what we can do is take a look at the torques about the center of mass of the brick. So we're basically going to treat this point as the pivot, and since the weight of the brick passes through that pivot, 
we will exclude the torque produced by the weight. We will therefore consider the torque produced by FA and the torque produced by FB. Those two torques must be equal in magnitude because again the brick is in equilibrium. We'll replace torque with the force times the distance for both torque A and torque B. We'll then divide both sides by D sub B and then divide both sides by F sub A. Now from our earlier result we recall that F sub A was equal to 4 times F sub B. So we can actually make a substitution whereby we replace F A with that 4 F B. And then once we cancel out the F sub B's we can see that the ratio of D A to D B is equal to 1 fourth or of course 0.25 so that would be the correct answer to part C. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. You are also welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.